How's everybody doing? That was a nice praise service, yes? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I love praising the Most High. I'm just so thankful that um, he took me out the muck and the mire to let me know his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, okay, I just want to get my breath. Okay. Um, first, I just want to give all thanks and honor and praise to the Most High God, Yehoah, creator of heaven and earth, maker, owner, and possessor of all things living. So that I will buy Yehoah, even for giving me this opportunity to speak before his people, even this giving this opportunity to speak before, before him. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to uh, give um, all due respect to the leader of this congregation, uh, Don um, Prince uh, Uriel. Is this a, is this is a car? Sorry. Excuse me. A sauce car. Yes. Yeah, so that I buy. Thank you. I need some water. <laughs> Thank you. No, you give me two. Thank you. Because I'm a little hot. Okay. I was praising. Thank you. Salika. Okay. I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful for the life of my Yeladim. I'm thankful for the life of my Abo and my Emo. I'm thankful for the life that he gave to my grandparents. I miss them so. Um, I'm just so incredibly grateful to be alive this day, um, that he woke me up, which means he gave me another chance. He said I deserve another chance, so I'm thankful for that. So I'll give all thanks and praise to the Most High God for that. Um, okay, so today I'm going to be going through uh, Psalms 77 and 78. Uh, I'm going to take my time because I just need to. Okay, so first I want to just discuss what where we are in um, in Psalm seventy-eight. I mean, sorry, Psalm seventy-seven. Excuse me. Okay, this psalm was written um, during the time of uh, the Israelites' exile and Babylon's peak, basically. And it's written by uh, Asaph, the Levite poet, um, as he's expressing how he feels at this time um, with Israel being in exile and, and Babylon being the one who's at their peak. Okay, so I'm going to have you stop reading periodically um, so I can make sure I <laughs> keep, keep it going. Because I know some people come up here and it's true that you get up here and you get lost and the sauce, you know, with everything that's going on. But I always want to make sure I, I, I stay focused on what I have here um, because it's really important that um, the message gets across to everybody. So what I will buy. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. We're in Psalm 77, verse 1. Hallelujah. 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 I will lift up my voice unto God and cry. I will lift up my voice unto God that he may give ear unto me. Okay. Okay, so let's start there. So the Most High hears us when we cry unto him. That's how we communicate with the Most High, when we cry out in prayer. When we cry out in need, when we cry out to him, that's when he hears us. That's when you know for, for without, a, without a doubt he's listening because we are humbled at that moment. At that moment, we crying out, we are humbled, and we are, we, are, we are brought very low. You understand? And there's proof of that. If you could um, go to Psalms 51, 17, please. That's praising too hard. Psalm 51, verse 17. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Yehoah, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. But thou delightest not in sacrifice, else will I give it. Thou hast no pleasure in burnt offering. 
The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, oh God, that will not despise. Okay, so this part is very important right here. I have one. Thank you so much, Fiona. That part right there, contrite, a broken spirit and contrite heart. So I wanted to know what that word contrite, contrite meant. And it means remorse. That's what it means. It means remorse. And when I looked up the word contrite, under remorse, there were synonyms. And one of them was conscious stricken. And I was like, wow, conscious stricken, that's deep. So I wanted to look up the word of conscious. And it meant an inner feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide to the rightness or wrongness of one's behavior. To the, to the rightness or wrongness of one's behavior. The rightness or your righteousness. That's what your conscience is there for. It's to keep you balanced. To make sure you don't do the right, I mean the wrong thing. It's make sure that you keep your righteousness above, above, above board. That's what it's there for. Continue. Yes, can you, mm-hmm. verse two, mm-hmm. four. Mm-hmm. In the day of my trouble, I will seek your hope. With my hand uplifted, mine eye streamed in the night without ceasing. My soul refreshed to be comforted. When I think thereon, O God, O God, I must moan. When I muse thereon, my spirit fainteth. Thou holds fast the lids of my eyes. I am troubled and cannot speak. Okay. So at this point right here, Asaph is is. In my book, it said, my sore ran the night. That's what it said in mine. And when I looked up sore, it meant pain. So he's in pain right now. Esau is in pain because he's seeing how his people are here in Babylon. And he's he's understanding why they're here, why we got put in Babylon in the first place. And it's causing him pain. It's causing him to be able to to, to stay up at night. He can't even get any sleep. Continue, please. Thou holdest fast the lids of mine eyes. I am troubled and cannot speak. I have pondered the days of old, the years of ancient times. In the night, I will call to remembrance my song. I will commune with mine own heart, and my spirit make a diligent search. Okay. So right here, when I read that, when I read about, I'm sorry, when I read about diligent, I wanted to know what that word meant as well. And that word meant conscious. Or oh, conscientious, 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 right? That's not how you say it. You know what I'm trying to say. Okay. And that put me back to the beginning, right, of stricken, of, of, of excuse me, of contrite. So it's all right now about your conscience, what's going on within you, what's going on within yourself, which is exactly what we have to do when we are talking to the Most High. We need to go within ourselves and figure out what's going on with us before we can talk to the Most High. We have to make sure that we are sitting there and making sure that we are humble before him before we come to him, before we pray and cry out to him. Okay, go ahead. Verse 8. Will your whole cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Is his promise come to an end forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Have he in his anger shut up his compassion? Okay. So right there, right there, now he's questioning, you know, is Most High even with us still? Is he even with us right now? So if you could just, um, um, excuse me, if you could uh, read for me, please, real quick. Um, Psalm 118, verses 15 through uh, 19. Excuse me, 15 through 18. Psalm 118, 15 through 18, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of Yehoah doeth valiantly. The right hand of Yehoah is exalted. Mm -hmm. The right hand of Yehoah doeth valiantly. I will not die but live. And declare the works of Yehoah. Yehoah has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over unto death. Okay. So right there, while he's questioning... Is he, is he not going to be here? Is he gone forever? Is he not listening? Can he not see? The Most High already told us that his right hand is always with us. His right hand is always there. He's always with his people. He's always going to be with Yisrael no matter what. It's up to us. It's our fault. 
it's us, the we the reason that we feel like he's apart from us because of our own iniquities, because of our own wrongdoings, because of our own misgivings. It has nothing to do with the most high. It's everything to do with us. That's why it's important for us to go into our conscience. That's why it's important for us to make sure that we, uh, we are um, making sure that we see our inner feeling or, excuse me, Salika, our inner feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide to the rightness or wrongness of our behavior. That's why it's so important. That's why he's not going to talk to you. He don't want to hear you unless you have a contrite heart. Conscious stricken. That's very serious. Your conscience has to be stricken. You have to be feeling some kind of a way. If you don't feel no kind of way before you put your knee down to that floor and talk to the creator, then what are you doing? Why are you even doing it? Why are you even going to him right now? Okay. Go ahead, Salika. And I said, this is my week. The right hand of the Most High could change. I will make mention of the deeds of Yehoah. Yea, I will remember the wonders of old. I will meditate also upon thy work and muse on thy doing. Okay. So let's meditate on the wonders of old real quick. Just real quick, let's meditate on those. Can we go to Genesis 6, please? Just Genesis 6, go, um, uh, um, speaking about the flood. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, and it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took of them wives whomsoever they choose. And Yehoah said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever, but he, for that he is also flesh. Therefore shall his days be 120 years. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children unto them, the same were mighty men of old, men of renown. And Yehoah saw that the wickedness of God was of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of their thoughts was evil, of his heart was only evil continually. Mm. And it repented Yehoah that he had made man on the earth and mm. it grieved him at his heart. Mm. And Yehoah said, I will blot out man whom I have created from mm. the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, mm. and fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Mm. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yehoah. Okay, so here we're talking about the flood. That's a wonder of the Most High. The flood, some people may think, oh gosh, that was, but that was horrible. He killed everybody and then he only kept, you know, Noah and his, and his uh, three, two sons, excuse me, his three sons. But that was a wonder of him because he didn't destroy everything. He kept Noah. Hallelujah. And because he kept Noah, we are here. Amen. Okay, another one. Can we go to Exodus 14, 16? Verse 16, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Yehoah said unto Moshe, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, and lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go into the midst of the sea on dry ground. Told thy Yehoah. He saved us. He took us out of Egypt. Hallelujah. That's another wonder. So what he was doing, he was reflecting on all the great things that the Most High had done for his people already. Something that we should do all the time. Go ahead. I'm sorry, no, one more. Um, go to Joshua 6.20. Chapter 6, verse 20, please. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the people shouted. The priest blew with the horns, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the horn that the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat. Mm, so that hallelujah. the people went into the city. Hallelujah. Every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. Another wonder. The Most High gave us Jericho. We didn't have to do nothing, but just walk around it and march. 
and then pray out loud and then praise his name. That's it. That's all we had to do. He did everything else like he always does, like he always does every time, every day in all our lives, even by waking you up in the morning. Hallelujah. Keep going. No, sorry, I'm sorry. Go back to Psalms. I apologize. Verse 14. O oh God, thy way is in holiness. Who is great? Who is a great God like our God? Mm -hmm. Thou art the God that does wonders. Amen. Thou has made known thy strength among the people. Thou has with thine arm redeemed thy people. The Amen. sons of Yaakov and Yosef Salah. Amen. The water sought thee, O oh God. The waters saw thee, they were in pain. The depths also trembled. The cloud flooded forth. Waters, the sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. Who else talked about that? Job did. So can we go to Job 37, 1 through 5, please? Seven verse one, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this also my heart trembled and is moved out of its place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice mm. and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He sends it forth under the whole heaven and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. After a voice it roared. He thundereth with the voice of his majesty mm. and he stayed them not when his voice was heard. God thunders marvelously with his voice. Marvelous. Great things do it he, which he cannot comprehend, which we cannot comprehend. We cannot comprehend it. Every time it thunderstorms outside, every time that joint crackle, 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 and then go boom, I say, told I, Yehovah, hallelujah. Because that's the creator talking right now. And that's what it sounds like. That's what that whip sounds like in the sky. That's the most high speaking right now. Hallelujah. Every time a thunderstorm happens, you should praise the creator. You should give him glory at that time. Because, A, you're not out there in it, hopefully. Amen. And he's keeping you safe from it. Amen. Every time I hear that, every time I see the lightning strike, I go, oh, my goodness, most high. Hold that, Rabbi Yehovah. Your power is unmatched. It's unwavering. Who can, be, who can like it unto thee? No one can. And that's how we should all be. Go ahead, continue. You, you the last verse already? Okay, I'm sorry. So this is the power that we serve when we speak. This is the power that we pray to when we bow our heads, when we prostrate ourselves. Remember that. Be like the Lion King, you know? Remember, remember, remember that. Because don't forget that. It's really important because right now we're at the time we're forgetting the creator and what he does and what he's done for us. That's why we're here. Voice of thy thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Okay, I'm so sorry. So in the beginning, on in my book, in the beginning, uh, it says, Mashkil. Yes, did you say that in yours too? Mashkil. In the beginning of Psalm 78, it's the first word in my book. Is it anybody else's book? Mashkil. Okay, that word is important. That word means enlightened. It means intellectual in Hebrew, uh, prudentor, having insight, wise saying, or song of wisdom. So before this even starts, he's telling you, this is about to be getting you a little smarter. So you need to pay attention to what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, so, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Verse 20. Thy way was in the sea, and thy path was in the great waters, and thy footsteps were not known. Thou didst lead thy people like a flock by the hand of Moshe and Aharon. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 78, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A mash keel of Asaph. Okay. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Mm -hmm. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a, with a parable, and I will utter dark sayings concerning the days of old. Okay. So, right here, like I said before, he's about to say something very important and wise. And the parable, a parable is a brief story with realistic characters and events intended to convey a moral and or spiritual lesson. So basically what Asaph is giving is 
um, with Psalm 78 is a song of wisdom and piety through things that have already happened with characters that we already know about. In this case, it's going to be about Egypt and all that took place during the splitting of the waters and even after in the wilderness. Okay, go ahead. That which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us, we will not hide from our children, telling to, telling to the generation to come the praises of Jehovah and his strength and his wondrous works that he has done. Okay. So this is also, um, excuse me, important. If you could real quick, please read Proverbs 22, um, 6. Thank you. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most important things because this is how we keep our children safe for generations to come. This is how we keep them connected to the Most High. If you could read Exodus 25 through 6, please, real quick. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a compliment. I'm not going to say that. Okay. Exodus uh, 20, 5 through 6, please. Mm -hmm. 5 through 6. Thank you. Toda. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yehovah thy God, am a jealous God. Amen. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth gener generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto the thousandth generation of them that love me and keep my commandments. Hallelujah. 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 This as parents to these little people out here, this is our sole purpose, to teach them about the Most High so that they will then teach it to their children. This is how you'll be able to go to your resting place in peace, Amen. knowing that you did that, knowing that when you leave, your children will be taken care of because they serve the Creator. They're going to tell their children to serve the Creator. They're not going to be part of the ones who he hates. He's not gonna be, they're not going to be in that, in that, in that parable. They're going to be part of the ones that he saves, that thousand generation. Amen. And that's what we want. That's our whole purpose. Because, excuse me, teaching them how to, teaching them how to love the most high with all their soul, all their might, and all their heart. Not to do what our forefathers did, being stiff-necked and stubborn. If you could read Judges 1, 20, 1 29, verse 1, Judges, verse 1, 29. Judges 1, yes, verse 29, yes. Judges chapter 1, verse 29, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Ephraim drove not out the Canaanites that dwell in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Okay, now keep going with the Psalms. Psalm 78. Mm -hmm. But he is, verse 5, but he established a testimony in Yaakov, and he appointed a law in Yisrael which he commanded our fathers that they should make known unto their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children that shall should be born, who should arise and tell to their children, hmm. that they may put their confidence in God and forget not the works of God, but keep his commandments. Hallelujah. Keep going. And might not be as their fathers, as mm -hmm. stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that have not set their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Mm -hmm. The children of Ephraim were as the archers handling the bow. They turned back in the day of battle. Okay, so we're not going to do that, right? 
We're not going to turn back in the day of battle when it's the most high needs us, when it's time for us to stand up for the creator. We're not going to turn ourselves backwards. We're not going to be like our forefathers. We're not going to be stiff-necked. We're not going to be stubborn. We're not going to be the ones who are sitting there saying, well, no, let me do this, no, instead of doing the right thing. We're going to be the ones who are going to be like, no, Todah Yehoah, and everything right that you do, that we're going to say do. We're not going to be the ones that say, yes, everything you say we do, we're going to do, and then we do the opposite. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. And they forgot his doings and his wondrous works that he had shown them. Mm. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt and the field of Zoan. He cleaved the sea and caused, it, caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as a heap. Mm, hold on a second. See, because we ourselves can be a bit hard-headed, we as the teachers to our children need to remember as well so that we can teach our children. They are the future. They are the next generation. They are the ones who's going to be here. They're going to be the ones burying us. So we need to make sure that they see it through us. They see us meditating on this law both day and night. Okay, go ahead. By day he led them with a cloud, and yeah. all the night with a light of fire. He cleaved rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as out of a great deep. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Yet went they on a hill to sin against him, to rebel against the Most High in the desert. And they tried God in their heart by asking for food for their craving. Okay, so even knowing all of that, we still sinned and we still doing it even now. With all our terror bearing and all our gossiping and all the pedophilia, physical, verbal, emotional abuse we do to each other, we're still doing it today. So what have we learned? Are we trying to get out of here? Are we trying to go home? Or are we just sitting here like, you know, you know, Yehovah, bless our Yehovah. Is that what we're doing? We just hear the praise and that's it? Are we here to work and do God's work and do what the most I said do so we can go home? So our children can go home. Isn't that the goal here? Isn't that the point of all of this? Of every Knesset, of every camp in here, in, in, in Ghana, in, in, in North Carolina, isn't that the whole point? So we can get out of here in the land of our captivity? We're still captives, you know. We're not free here. Go ahead. Yea, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Mm. Behold, he smote the rock that waters gushed out, and streams overflowed. Can he give us bread also? Or will he provide flesh for his people? Therefore, Yehoah heard and was wroth. And the fire was kindled against Yaakov, and anger also went up against Israel, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Okay. If you could please um, go to um, Isaiah uh, 59, verse 1 through 2. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, hallelujah. 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 Yehovah's hand is not shortened that it cannot say. Hmm. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Come on. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, okay. and he will not hear. He won't hear you. He not going to hear you if you're out here sinning in iniquities and all that other stuff. Why do you want that? Why do you want that? For your children. Why would you want that for yourself? The whole purpose of us knowing who God is is to do right before God. The whole purpose of knowing this law is to do the law. What's the point if you're not going to do the law? I just don't understand. What is the purpose if you're not going to do it? That is our job here is to be representatives of the Most High and show the people out here, be a light to the nations. How are we going to be a light when we're in the dark? Come she. And he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. And he caused manna to rain upon them for food and gave them the corn of heaven. Man did eat the bread of the might. He sent them provisions to the full. He caused the east wind to set forth in heaven, and by his power he brought on the south wind. 
he caused flesh also to rain upon them as dust, and winged fowl as the sand of the seas. Mm. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about all their dwellings. So they did eat, and they were full. And he gave that which they craved. They were not estranged from their craving, yet their food was in their mouths. <laughs> when the anger of, of God went up against them and slew the lusting among them, and smote down the young men of Israel. Mm. For all they this they send still, and believe not in his wondrous works. Therefore he ended their days as a breath. Mm -hmm. and their years in terror. When he slew them, they would inquire after him and turn their back and seek God earnestly. Okay. And they I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And they remembered that God was their rock and the most high their redeemer. Okay. So now, now they're hearing the most high, right? And believe in the most high because he's getting at them. Now they believe. Now they want him. Now they need him. Now they're like, oh, most high. Please, most high. Oh, God's most high. That's what we do, though. That's what we do. We forget about the most high. We go about our days. We go about our business. La, 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 lullabies and sunshine. And then when all of a sudden, boom, something happens in our life, we like, oh, wait, most high. No, wait, where you going? Where you at? Can you come back, please? Can you? If you could just, you know, help me pay this rent real quick, I really appreciate it. I know I didn't pray yesterday or the day before that or the day before that or the day before that. I apologize. Can you just help me out? I really appreciate it. No, he don't work like that. Most high don't work like that. Most high work every day. You talk to him every day. You give him praise every day. You thank him every day. Amen. You don't be a, 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 a prideful person because he'll let you sit in that pride. Like he just said. I let him sit in it. Okay. You want to be prideful? You act like I don't exist? All right, cool. Then he'll come down. He's going to smite you. Then what? But they beguiled him with their mouth and lied unto him with their tongue. But their heart was not steadfast with them, neither were they faithful in his covenant. Mm. But he, being full of compassion, forgiveth iniquity and destroyeth not. Yea, many a time <laughs> doth he does turn away his anger and doth not stir up all his wrath. So he remembered that they were but flesh. Mm -hmm. A wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Okay. It cometh not again. Oh, uh, I mean... He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. You ain't coming back. That's what they believe. They believe they're going to come back. You're not coming back. This is it. This is it right here. This is your test. This is your trial. You know, this is, this is it right here. There's no coming back. I mean, he, he called you. <laughs> the most I called you but flesh a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Nothing. That's what he calls you. You're like, you're like a blade of grass. That I can just go like this. I mean, that don't make you feel small. That don't make you feel this big. Not even this big. Compared to the greatness of the creator, compared to where he sits up on high, you should feel like a little itty bitty, itty bitty thing and want to praise this God every day. Want to get up and say, Told I Yehoah, if you do something wrong, oh my God, please don't kill me. Please don't have me as that wind that you just does, doesn't, that passes by and doesn't come back again. Continue, told I. How oft did they rebel against him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? And still yet again they tried God <laughs> and set bounds to the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he redeemed them from the adversary. How he set his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan and turned their rivers into blood so that they could not drink from their streams. He sent among them the swarms of flies which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. Mm. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave over their cattle also unto the hail and their flocks to the fiery vaults. I just, I'm sorry. I just want him to keep reading, just, just to read how powerful the Most High is real quick. It's what he did, what the Creator kept doing, how he kept getting at people for us, and what did we do in return? Nothing. Nothing for him. Go ahead. Continue. He sent forth upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble, ascending of messages of evil. He leveled a path for his anger and spared not their soul from death. But he gave their life over to the pestilence 
and Amen. smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the first fruits of their strength, in the tents of Ham. Amen. But he made his own people to go forth like sheep and guarded them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them safely and they feared not, so but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. Mm. And he brought them safely to his holy so quarter, to the mountain which his right hand had gotten. He drove out the nations also before them and allotted them to their inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in tents. Okay, excuse me. Can you go back to um, um, Psalm 118 again and read that again? That Psalm 118. Um, uh, it was 118, verse uh, 15 through 18. Thank you. The voice of rejoicing in salvation in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of Yehovah doeth valiantly. Hallelujah. The right hand of Yehovah, the right hand of Yehovah is exalted. Amen. The right hand of Yehovah doeth valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of Yehovah. Yehovah have chastened me sore, but he has not given me over unto death. Amen. So why do you, we keep doing this? Because one day he is going to give you over. Because he's going to be tired of it. He did it already. He did it in the flood. He did it already. So why are you, why are you testing him? Why are we testing the creator with his, with his mercy that endures forever and ever? Yet they tried and provoked God the most high and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt treacherously like their fathers. They turned aside like a deceitful bow, for they provoked him with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. Mm. God heard and was wroth, and mm. he was great, and he greatly abhorred Israel. He forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he had made to, to dwell among men, and delivered his strength into captivity, and his glory unto the adversary's hand. Okay, if you could just um, read Deuteronomy twenty-eight sixty-eight, and then read it on out. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, hallelujah. hallelujah. And Yehovah shall hallelujah. bring thee back into Egypt by ships. By the way thereof I said unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there shall ye sell yourselves unto your enemies hmm. for bondmen and for bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you. Congratulations, Yisrael. Congratulations. So unless you want that to keep happening, the... The sister uh, Massey's and the Sandra Bland's and the Eric Garner's and all these people that have passed away and been murdered and been taken. If that is something that you want to keep going and keep acting like you acting like they was acting in the book. We're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be better than our forefathers. We're supposed to teach our children to do better than our forefathers. Go ahead. Finish it out. He gave his people also unto the sword and was wroth with his, with his inheritance. Fire devoured their young men and their virgins had no marriage song. The priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. Mm -hmm. Yehovah awakens as one asleep, like a mighty man recovering from wine. And he smote his adversaries backwards and he put them in a perpetual reproach. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he abhorred the tent of Yosef and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but cho chose the tribe of Yehuda, the Mount Zion, which he loves. And he built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth which he had founded forever. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes that give suck, he brought him to shepherd over Yaakov his people and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart mm. and led them by the skillfulness of his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in closing, you know, the most high is with us. He's going to always be with his people. He says so. But we got to do our part. We got to make sure we do our part by teaching our children, by making sure our children know right from wrong, by making sure our children, uh, by making sure that our children uh, pray to him diligently so that when they have their children, they will do it as well. You know, it's a very, it's a, uh, this movie, Milan. Anybody seen this movie, Milan? 
Anybody ever seen that movie, Milan? Okay, it's about when um, the terrorists um, kidnap all the people from the Olympics, right? There's a movie about it. In the movie, the Muslim guy has the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the Israel, the Jewish guy, and he's speaking about this is never going to stop, you know. The Muslim guy is telling him that. This is never going to stop. He said, well, it has to stop. The guy from Israel, the Jewish guy, said, no, it has to stop. You know, you guys aren't going to win. He was like, but we will win. He said, because our children will have children, and their children will have children, and their children will have children. He said, because home is everything. Hallelujah. Hope I got something from you guys. Got something from what I said. Any mistakes on my, my, my own, not the most highs. Told her by Yahuwah for everything and all things. Hallelujah. Yeah.